Hello everyone, this is Mr. Rebel Ronan here again, and today I'm here with my breakdown for Mineta. So, Mineta is a character that's debated as to whether he's top tier or bottom tier. I think he's somewhere in the middle because he has really strong things, but he also has a lot of weaknesses that make him significantly weaker than other characters. He has really amazing buttons like his air attack. Um, he has really interesting setups with his grapes, which are a really interesting thing since they don't do any damage and they're unblockable. But if you get the setups correct, you can get free combos. Um, he has really good setups using his plus ultra attack, and yeah, he's just a very unusual and unique character, as you'd probably expect with his weird quirk. But anyways, let's get into his buttons. So his regular attack string is this three hitting attack string. On females, it has a different, more creepy animation, and I think it does a little bit more damage. But you're never going to be doing the last hit of his attack string anyways, because you don't get anything off of it. You're always going to cancel off of the second hit. You can dash cancel wherever, or you can cancel into another quirk to get easy combos. And yeah. It's a regular attack string. It's actually a, a kind of weak. It has slow startup and it doesn't reach very far. So like, I don't think I can even hit him from like here. If I walk back a little bit, he whiffs. So that's one of Minata's biggest weaknesses, is he doesn't reach very far with his attacks. So his air attack string, it is also hit by the same problem. It, it is, does reach a bit further, actually quite a bit further but some characters reach a lot further than he does. His air attack string is just two to hit and kick. You can cancel it into other buttons, like his yellow attack. So yeah, his attack strings are pretty decent. Well, actually, no, they're not. They're pretty bad. That's probably the worst thing about him. So, his red attack is this interesting six hitting red attack. You can actually cancel it into regular buttons before it ends. So if I hit, hit four hits hit, I can go into his attack string. And obviously this means this is a great red attack, because you can use it to go into combos and get extended damage off of them. There we go. Super easy 10,000 damage. Um, his yellow attacks? On the ground, it's this weird bounce, kind of like Froppy, it doesn't actually do an attack until you do a second input. So it's kind of just this like weird maneuverability move, it puts him into the air, um, he can jump over projectiles or completely armor through them if he does happen to get hit by them. But if you press the button again, he will do this like, <laughs> sudden like slam into the opponent, and that you can actually combo up with, like for real. So the opponent is on recovery, so it is a true combo after this lands. So you can dash up into your buttons afterwards and extend your combos that way. You can also easily jump into the air and then do an air combo after it hits for free. Okay, um, his air yellow attack, I'm sure you, you see me do a bunch already. It is just so good in so many ways. It does good damage, 4000 damage is pretty good for a yellow attack. It reaches ridiculously far. Here, I'll go over here. He just, oh, okay, it missed slightly there, but it reaches really far and attracts the opponent pretty well. So if I have him on dash, like, running around, um, it has pretty decent tracking and it'll home, home in on the opponent and hit them. And it also has a huge amount of hits done, so, like, the opponent is in that whole, um, animation where they're just, like, floating in the air for ages. So you have a lot of time to like set up throwing your grapes or whatever while they're still getting blown in the air. And that obviously means it's pretty easy to combo off of as well. To get decently high damage in the air. Just for doing a dash cancel or two. Okay, now into his quirk one. His quirk one is simply he just throws a ball at the opponent. And you see, as you see, these balls act actually stick to the opponent in a random place on them. And once they get hit by 10 balls, I wasn't actually counting, they go into this hit animation. And then it's actually a true combo up when they are stuck like that. So this is... His quirk one isn't actually a tool you're really going to be using that often. He doesn't actually throw it that far, like... He throws it to like there, which isn't that useful. It is faster than some of his other buttons that he throws balls with, but you're not going to be using it that often, because it just throws a single ball, and it can be useful in some situations, which I'll talk about later. 
So like, maybe if you know how, somehow you know exactly how many balls you have on the opponent. And then you can just throw one more and then the opponent's stunned. And you can go for a combo. Uh, but yeah. That's his quirk 1. So here, for his quirk 2, and his quirk 1 is basically the same in the end. He just throws the ball. And they do no damage, but they are also unblockable. And the thing about all these balls when he puts them on the opponent, is if I put him on dash, he's actually a lot slower. The more balls you have on him, the slower your opponent runs. Which is really useful, because... Well, I mean, one, people can't run away from you, but also, like, it just makes their attack slower, and... Yeah, it's a very useful effect, even though it's not high damaging or anything. Okay, his tilt quirk one is this move where he throws like a ton of balls at the opponent. If they come in contact with them, they'll stick, and they also stay on the ground for a little bit as they bounce around, so if the opponent walks into them, the balls will get stuck. He can do it in the air as well, and he'll just throw them like down. But this move is a directional move, so I can do it to the left, or to the, um, to the right or to the left. Or, and if I'm in the air, you can actually do, like, whatever direction, so I can even do behind me, I believe. Okay, maybe I can't do... But you can aim the, at where he throws them. Um, if you mash the button, you'll actually throw more. So, see, this is the regular version. He just throws, like, a bunch like that, but if you mash the button, he throws more. And as you see, this one is a lot more efficient at getting balls into the opponent, especially if you're trying to zone your opponent with these. See, that got like four of them on him instantly, so I think he probably has enough if I do something like this. Now he's stuck. For me to get a combo that I messed up. <laughs> but yeah, and this move, especially once you've done a combo that leaves you high in the air, like after a, ye a yellow attack or two. Wait, I wanted them to be meaty blowed. For goodness sake. What is happening? But essentially, when you finish your combo and you're high in the air, and most of your combos are going to end in a meaty blow, you're going to be left high in the air, and your opponent's going to be on the ground. Especially in maps that have a higher um, roof, like outdoor maps. Minato is going to be crazy high in the air, and you can just rain your balls down from the heavens. And when you see them hit, then I reacted a bit like that. But you can actually dash in and get a full combo if you manage to get enough balls to in on the opponent. And a lot of people, they have like no idea what to do. Like when you're so high in the air, and you can just keep doing this move as many times as you want until they get <laughs> stuck and stunned. A lot of people don't realize you can just jump in the air and dash at him. Or they're like a bit scared of like, wait, what is he doing? But yeah, it's a tactic that I find works a surprising amount of time. So a lot of the time a combo I do looks something like this. And I might put in the dash cancel here. Get 10,000 damage. And then I'll just start, and especially in maps that have a high roof, like I said before, like the outdoor one, like overhauls place. Oh no no! But if I react a bit faster, then the opponent gets stunned and you get a full combo if they don't come up to you. Okay, now for his quirk 2, it is this weird <clears throat> arrangement of balls where he just whacks you three times, it's a string, you do it once, you just want one hit, but it's a decently damaging combo ender, and it also puts on, each hit puts a ball onto the opponent, so it's also an effective way of ending your combos if you want to put more balls on the opponent, because obviously, like that, if they have enough then, you can get a combo from it. And yeah, the damage did reset because I messed up that combo, but that would have been about like 9,000, 10,000 damage. Um, yeah. And that's basically the move. You can get simple combos if you want to do something like that. Or like, if you don't want to do the weird fancy stuff, you can do something like this. But, I wouldn't recommend. It does put some balls on the opponent, so I do like to use it sometimes instead of the yellow at um, attack. Because the more balls on the opponent, the better. Because maybe you can get a combo, or maybe you're just going to be able to, um... Like, the opponent will just be slower. So yeah. Quirk 2 is just a combo ender. It doesn't lead to meteor blows or anything. It just does some damage and puts some balls. Okay. For his tilt Quirk 2, it is this move, which is actually a parry. So if I put Bakugo into target combo, I do this. 
Oh, damn it, I didn't think I timed that correctly. Essentially, it's just a basic parry. You don't really get anything after it, even if you dash cancel. He doesn't really go far enough. So you're not going to get anything off of it. Maybe if you time support, like, perfectly you can. But the main thing about this move if it, it, is that it actually starts up really quickly. So in a block string, in some gaps in the opponent's buttons where you can't sidestep, you can actually do his parry. So, I mean, obviously Bakugo, this gap here is huge, and you can sidestep out of it. But some gaps with the opponent, like, after twice his first hit and his second hit, you can't actually sidestep. So... But yeah, with his parry, you can interrupt some gaps that are usually too small to sidestep through. Bakugo wasn't a great example, but yeah, sometimes in gaps like Twice or other characters that have small gaps that you can't really sidestep, this is a great thing to interrupt. And you can also do it in the air, so if you're in a weird air situation where you're both high in the air, it works in the air as well. And it also essentially means that um, Minato never really needs to do a guard cancel, which if you don't know what that is, check out a different video I did about it, because in almost any gap he can throw in this, and it all works like a, a guard cancel, because if they hit you then, well yeah, then you've parried them. But yeah, it's a good parry. That's about it. <laughs> okay, um, quick note on his, um, this is his plus ultra one. Now, his plus ultra one is pretty interesting. It does decent damage for plus ultra one, maybe a bit below average damage. Yeah, only 8,000, which is still pretty good damage. But as you can see, it puts nine balls on the opponent. So if I do a single ball attack, the opponent is going to be stunned to go in for a combo afterwards, which is very interesting to take note of. So even if you do a simple combo like this and end anything in your plus ultra one, then you are going to be able to instantly like reset them for a combo if I just run around and do a single ball. Look, he's gotten hit. And I get to go in for a full combo for free. Okay. Now let's talk about Minata's combos. So you may have seen some of them already, so you're gonna do two hits for bread and butter. Um two hits into his yellow attack. Jump into the air, two hits into his yellow attack, and there we go. 7,500 meterless and you're left in the air. So you can either do another yellow attack after if you want, if the opponent recovers or tries to attack you, or if they decide to fall to the ground, you can do a bunch of grapes from the skies. So those options look something like this. So if your opponent recovers and tries to press buttons, oops, I don't know what happened there. You can do another yellow attack and try and catch them. Oops, what am I doing? You can go in for another yellow attack after you do it like a dash or a sidestep in the air. If they try to engage you, then yeah, just do another yellow attack and you'll beat them. And if they decide to land to the ground, they decide to respect you from your combo, then you get to just rain your balls down from the heaven for a long while. Because you can do this move as many times as you want. So basically, you can just put a bunch of balls on the opponent for free. And then get another free combo if your opponent gets hit by enough balls. So yeah, very good bread and butter combo. If you want to add a dash cancel, you can add one in up to the end, up to do the yellow attack in the air, and just do the air part twice, and then it's 9,700 damage, which is almost 10,000, which means he has pretty good damage for a single dash cancel. That's slightly above average. But yeah, a lot of the time I don't even bother to do a dash cancel because he can save his meter for his plus ultra or whatever. And he's still getting pretty good damage and it's a good setup like after just this basic combo, which is completely meterless, which is pretty crazy that he can do this whole uh, seven hit combo just off of a regular hit. Okay, I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos of maybe Papa Berto or... Um, Kashimaro, who use um, combos like where he they do two hits into the yellow move, and they do another hit into the grape throw. Oh damn, I messed it up. And then it stuns your opponent, and then you get to go in for a combo afterwards. And while this is a good, like it would be good for most characters, I find it adds too much like difficulty to your combo, so it like it really limits your chance of actually being able to get decent damage. 
and it also doesn't give you that much extra damage than his uh, Oh my god, why can't I do this? Damn it. A lot of the time it just stuns the Meep normally if they don't have Eddie Graves to start with. Okay, so your opponent- oh, damn it, it didn't combo. What is happening? I mean, I guess this is what you see. It just adds, I think, too much complexity to the combo, and especially online, it's really unlikely to hit this. Oh my goodness. But maybe just if you don't suck like me, it's, it will be easier. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So yes, you do get a lot of extra damage, seeing as that whole combo was free. So it is good, but personally I find it's too hard to execute online. But yeah, if you can do it, go for it. 9,700 damage, completely meterless, that's great. So yeah, those are the two types of combo routes he has. Like regularly, so you can either do this reset, which I suck at. You also have to aim the, um, quirk one pretty well. There we go. Oops, messed it up. Or you can just go for the basic combo, where after you do his yellow attack, just jump in the air and do some air combos. You can leave it meterless, or you can dash cancel again to get 9,700 damage and a meaty blow, which is good because your opponent will be on the ground. But yeah, he gets good meterless damage whether you want to make it difficult or not. And he gets good setups off of his combos. Raining his balls down from the heavens, and if you see that enough balls hit, you can dash in and get a free combo. Super easy. Okay. So... Obviously all of his combos can be a little bit more damage if you do the red attack at the start, but now I want to talk about his... Um, actually, I'll go over sidekick combos. So a lot of the time I don't really talk about sidekick combos, but with Minato I feel like they um, work pretty well with him. So a medium combo you can do with Minato looks something like this. And then you go into the regular situation again. Oh my goodness. And then he's getting really high damage for a no meter combo. That was zero dash cancels and 11,500 damage. And if you wanted to add a dash cancel, I'm sure it would do even, <laughs> even more damage. And that wasn't even a meteor blow there, so you can extend it more if you want. I'll try and show that if I don't mess up a hundred times like I did before. So you bring out the support after the second hit of his Quirk 2 string. Damn it, yeah, Meteor blowed a bit early. Yeah, if I do the... Ah, uh, yeah. It's gonna do like 13,000 damage or whatever. Okay. Now for where I really like his extended combos. So as you remember, his plus ultra one leaves nine balls on the opponent after any situation. Which means you can get a reset if you just throw some balls at your opponent or they t and then you get a free combo after his plus ultra one. But this also works if you um, combo off of your plus ultra one. So if I do something like a really basic combos, like two hits into his quirk two string, I can do something like this. No, I messed it up. <laughs> okay, wait, I'll show a more simple version so I can actually hit it while I'm recording, since I'm awful at doing combos when I record. But essentially, you can extend it using someone like Jiro or other good combo supports. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Really? really? <laughs> One more try. But you can see where this is going. Basically, you can just 
like, if you touch your opponent once with the bowl, then you can get a super extended combo off of his plus ultra one. Ah! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I have to show how much damage you can get. I feel like it's my duty, okay. So, plus ultra one. Christ sakes, oh my god. I'll just make it super simple. Or not! But you see, it added 4000 damage to the end of whatever that combo was. So, it's a lot of damage. I didn't see what the other thing was, but that's that's gotta be like... I don't know, 18,000 or something. So yeah, a lot of damage if you extend off of the combo. But what I really like to do is if I have a Kaminari support or even a Jiro support, it works with her too. I do two hits, and like even just a short combo like this, this is going to do a ton of damage. And when it gets to the end of his plus ultra one, I do Kaminari's plus ultra one as a support. And while he's in that animation, I'll do a hit into his quirk two. There we go, managed to hit the combo this time, <laughs> 22,600 damage. Now, you might be like, oh, but that cost you so much resources, it was two plus ultras. But if you think about it, that's about the amount of damage that a, um, a level three plus ultra, like a team plus ultra does. So like, you know when you have Night Eye, Deku, and Mirio on a team, and they always save up to do that level three plus ultra that kills you in like a single hit? That combo was essentially a level three plus ultra, but it only costs you two. So. It's like a way discounted version of a plus ultra 3 combo. And also, most of the combo is completely unbreakable, just like a plus ultra um, 3 combo. Because you can't interrupt his plus ultra 1. You can't interrupt Kaminari's plus ultra 1. And by that point, you've already done a ton of damage. And then if they want to break here, they're just stopping you from getting <laughs> what that you've already done like 20,000 damage com combo. They're just gonna stop you from getting an extra like single thousand. So like that is a ton of damage, completely um, unbreakable. And then <laughs> yeah, it's like 22,600 damage if you do your combos properly. So yeah, pretty crazy stuff. And then Kaminari is back by the end of it, anyways. So yes, very interesting combos. And I think that's about all I have to say with um, Mineta. He, I really love. How his plus ultra one, it can either be used for setups to get a free combo afterwards, or you can get huge damage combos if you use a support. It works with characters like Kaminari or Jiro. Oh god. I didn't mean to do both of them at the same time. I mean, I guess that would work too. There's no reason to do this, just except for swag. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Oh god. But yeah, the combo works with Jiro as well. You can get huge damage, but you can also just get completely free damage that does, like, decently high damage. It leaves you at good Oki. You can either do, and then it's a mix-up after you've done that combo, because they have to guess whether you're going to do another yellow attack in the air, or whether you're going to go in for the balls. And, yeah, either option is pretty safe for you. If they try and attack, you go in for a yellow attack, and then you get a combo after it. It's a pretty win-win for Mineta. Um, obviously he can get um, more damage meterlessly with his plus ultras if you do this kind of combo, but that adds a bit more scaling to the combo and I feel like the increased effort isn't really worth it, especially since he can get good damage off of it, like, without doing that. Oh damn. But that would have been good damage anyways, like 18,000 or something. But yeah, anyways guys. That was my breakdown for Minoru Mineta. I hope you enjoyed. He's a really fun character, pretty unique, and I think he's pretty balanced. He has some weaknesses, like his regular attack string is kind of bad, but he's a really good red attack that travels far, he has an amazing yellow attack in the air, and he has interesting resets using his balls. And a lot of people don't use his balls that much because they don't do damage, but I think they're a really interesting tool, very unique to Mineta, and yeah, very fun character. Maybe strong, maybe weak, just depends. It's in the hands of the user, Mineta can be weak or strong. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. This was my breakdown on Mineta. 
I'll show you his plus ultra too as my outro, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you!